Welcome to the podcast Escape Debate. Your host today will be public health students from San Jose State who have been working with Create TV through the organization Aki to create this podcast on the vaping epidemic among young people. We are Group 17 and my name is Jamie. My name is Tran. My name is Alfia. My name is Nisteha. And my name is Naima. In this episode, we will be focusing on the issues of vaping and tobacco use among young people in Santa Clara County in California and how quickly this new addiction of nicotine use has risen these past few years. Stay tuned. So recently, vaping has been a pretty big topic, especially vaping among teenagers and the younger population. It's such a big issue since a report by the County of Santa Clara Public Health Department found the use of flavored tobacco has increased from 82.3% to 93.1% over the past two years. Although traditional tobacco has been declining today, California still has 6,800 new youth smokers per year, which is lower compared to Texas, but higher than all other states in the U.S., If we're just looking at young people, according to the CDC, there has been a 218% increase of middle schoolers and 135% of high schoolers who vape. And what's interesting is that in the state of California, you have to be 21 years old to purchase a vape. That must mean that either they're buying them illegally, stores are selling them to underage kids, or they know someone who is 21 years or older to purchase a vape for them. So you may be wondering, how do these teens and kids start smoking? Some studies have found that kids usually start smoking during their peak years in 6th and 7th grades or from the ages of 11 to 13 years old. One reason is the marketing strategies of the tobacco and vaping companies targeting the younger population. One major marketing strategy these companies use is by creating flavored vaping products that imitate young people's favorite snacks. Some of the few flavors I've come across are strawberry shortcake, fruit loops, cotton candy, blue raspberry, Skittles, and even bubble gum. Some studies have shown that 96% of young people who vape use flavored products. So why don't they just ban flavored vaping products then? I don't know if anyone remembers a few years ago when the Juul was very popular among the vaping community who sold all sorts of flavors. The FDA cracked down on Juul's pre-filled pod flavors because they were so popular among young people. Now they are only allowed to sell two flavors, menthol and tobacco. So to bypass this new FDA policy, vaping companies found a loophole to put flavored products in the hands of young people once again by shifting towards flavored disposable vapes, which actually don't fall fall under FDA's regulation of pre-filled pods. The disposable vape market is unregulated, allowing for vaping companies to take advantage of younger people by getting them hooked to their flavors and then to the nicotine inside the vape. Uh, Now we'll talk about the health risk of vaping. Uh, Most vapes and tobacco products contain nicotine, uh, which is a highly addictive drug. Nicotine has been proven to cause several health issues, uh, one of them being for young people uh, is brain damage since the brain is still developing until the age of 25. The other health effects are cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, diabetes, and long-term use. Some may argue that there are some benefits or or vaping isn't the most harmful, but but there are still more studies has to be done to fully understand the long-term effect and whether e-cigarette or vaping are effective in helping adults quit smoking. The bottom line is that smoking is for anyone who has never been exposed to smoking before. In Santa Clara County, 90% of adult smokers reported that they have tried their first product before they were 18. 80% of youth who vape started it with a flavor product. Some kids will quit smoking before leaving high school, but the majority will try to quit and fail. This is why we continue to see college students and young adults vaping. Since for all college students and have been through high school before, from your memory, how often do you see a college student or someone young like in high school vaping? And where did you see it? And if you know what kind of vape or tobacco products were they using? I saw it mostly around campus. People would smoke and then like 
since it's not like an actual cigarette and it doesn't need fire, they would just blow the air and then like throw it back into their pocket. Yeah, I agree. Um, I've also seen a lot of, during my time in high school, a lot of students would vape in the bathroom and um, during college, during my freshman year before the pandemic, um, I've seen students vaping on campus and just a little bit outside of San Jose State. Um, yeah, so I have a different story. Uh, as someone who moved here to the U.S. my senior year of high school, um, I found it very shocking how accessible vaping is to high school students. Uh, back home while uh, in my high school year, uh, we were involved in more, you know, sport, uh, took field trip and uh, uh, other activities. Additionally, vaping and other substances are subjected to a strict rule that regulate their accessibility, so which make uh, vaping less accessible, even if you want to smoke, uh, smoke it. Oh, that's really interesting, Afia. Over here, um, I work at a restaurant, so it's very accessible for a lot of people um, who are under the age of 21 that I work with. They and they actually use flavored vapes and I know that they get it from people who are over the age of 21. Wow that's very interesting. Well with all that being said if you know someone is vaping what are some ways you could encourage them to quit? I would definitely use the scare tactic since we don't really have a lot of study and know like what the long-term health effects are. I would just really ask them, like, do you want to be, like, a part of the unknown, not knowing, like, how your health is going to be in the next couple of years? Yeah, definitely. And to add on that, I would also I would also try to encourage them to quit by showing them the cost of the addiction, which would be about $25, $20 per uh, disposable vape. So, so far, we've only been generally discussing the topic. Now, does anyone want to share their personal experience or opinions? Uh, I have a personal experience with vaping, generally within my high school experience. So, vaping within my high school became a norm for young students. Many students would smoke on campus, in the bathrooms, and eat even outside of school. And watching students every day smoking vapes on campus allowed me to see how this drug was really affecting the people that I was close with. Some of the students used it as coping mechanisms for stress. Others used it to look cool or couldn't stop from their first try. I always had that like thought in the back of my head of maybe to try vaping just to see what the hype was all about just to potentially fit in with like the more popular people within high school. Although vaping really changed my relationship with friends. Every day my friends would ask, hey, do you want to smoke this jewel really quick? And I would reply like, uh, I'm okay. I would ask them questions like, does it have nicotine? Or do you care about what the effects might have on your health? But many of them replied, oh, who cares about all that or nothing will ever happen to me. And at that moment, I realized how my peers truly didn't know how vaping could affect them in the long run. And being surrounded by tons of smoke affected me every day and started to affect my breathing. And it affected my overall health. And every day I was inhaling secondhand e-cigarette vapor but after a couple of months of hanging out with those friends, one of them ended up hospitalized for smoking jewels and vaping. And then the doctors said that they had lung injuries and due to the constant smoking and long-term long respiratory issues due to that severe damages. And after this, it really opened my eyes to how harmful vaping could be to your overall health. 
and the effects it has on your body. And it wasn't until I seen my friend hospitalized, I knew that it was something serious that I should stay away from. And I felt bad because it was something serious and I didn't know how to prevent it from happening. And just seeing your friends go through that made me feel really bad. But all in all, this experience taught me how harmful vaping is and the effects it has on your relationships. And sometimes I even look back and I wonder, like, what if I gave in to peer pressure or even ended up being just as addicted as my friends? Yeah, going back to what you said, Naima, about one of your friends being hospitalized. The other day I was on TikTok and I was just scrolling through my For You page and I came across this video of this girl saying that she was hospitalized for this particular brand of um, vape, I think it is. And I was like looking through the comments and some of you were talking about how, oh, like they know someone that's in the hospital for the same thing or like they got a lung infection or their lung is collapsing or they need like, um, they need IVs because they're like, dehydrated and stuff. And as I was reading the comments, everyone was like, oh, that's crazy. Like they're making jokes like, oh, that's crazy. I'm gonna take another hit though. Or that's crazy. Like, that's not me. Like, I feel like if they're not the one that's actually in the hospital and experiencing this, they're not going to take it serious. Yeah, that's what I'm scared about. I actually have a younger cousin, my uncle's son, who he's in high school. He's a sophomore and he was caught with a vape and I've approached him about it and asked him if he still had it. And he did have it on him and he did mm-hmm. offer to give it to offered it to give it to me but I I kind of just told him you know that's your decision you just better know that it's an addicting thing and there are health effects that can happen to you so I let him choose uh, what he wanted to do with his vape. episode we have discussed the current concerns with vaping among the young population and shared our personal experiences and opinions thank you for joining us on escape the vape and see you next time thank you thank you thank you